Oh, that's so satisfying. Welcome back to Woodwork Therapy. In today's video, we're gonna be cutting the cheese. No, not, not like that, but that's gross. Like, well, I mean, that could happen. But anyway, that's not the point. We're gonna be cutting the cheese as in like we're making a cheese slicer. But not just any cheese slicer, it's a fancy cheese slicer. Because, well, you know, if you're a woodworker, you already understand, you gotta overdo things. And we definitely, definitely overdid this one. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into that. But before we do, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, comment down below. I love reading your guys' comments. Let's get to the video. Or cutting the cheese. This, the cheese, cheese on a cheese. Okay, let's just go. Come on, let's go. All right, so to get started with this project, we're gonna be using two different woods. Uh, we're gonna be using a hard maple. At least I'm pretty sure that's what that is. It's hard something, we'll go with that. And uh, then we're gonna be using this beautiful piece of walnut. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these down into strips, put them together. We're gonna do the simple method. We're not gonna do a million strips. This is gonna be a nice, simple, easy cheese board because, well, it's a cheese board. It is what it is. So on that note, let's get to uh, cutting some of the stuff down. All right, since the cheese board needs to be seven inches wide, uh, we're going to go ahead and cut down the walnut into two inch strips and then we'll cut this little guy down into three inch strips. So let's get sawing. All right, so we got everything cut down to dimensions. So these are all two inches precisely across, and this is three inches precisely across, 10 inch length. So the main thing is if you're gonna cut it precise like we did, make sure that you have a really good glue up. So we busted out all the favorites. So we've got our uh, bar clamps already out here. We've got a couple of calls and uh, tight bond three. So that's a waterproof glue. And most importantly, our brush. So we're just going to go ahead and glue this up real quick and uh, let this set. So let's get to it. All right, so it's time to go ahead and uh, drill the hole in the top. So what we're going to be using is a little Craig jig, which is basically like a doweling jig. I mean, it's not a lot of difference. The main thing about it is, is that when you go to put it on the board, it'll kind of hold in place. We're not sponsored by Craig or anything, but this thing's pretty legit. So there you go. Um, normally doweling jigs don't sit like in the spots where you want them. But uh, in this case here, we're able to just kind of pop it right on. There we go. And there it is. I'll leave a link to this down in the description. I think it's a pretty awesome little tool. Anyway, uh, especially for stuff like this. So originally we were figuring, oh, we'll just go ahead and use a 1 4th inch drill bit. Not long enough. And this is a pretty standard run of the mill 1 quarter inch drill bit. So we went out and we bought another drill bit and from Diablo and it was about a thousandths oversized so it wouldn't fit here and which means it also doesn't match that 1 4th inch uh, diameter that you would expect. So we went out and bought this DeWalt one and this one works just fine. So what we're gonna do is just uh, uh, go and uh, measure from here to here. We need to have, if you're using this jig, and this may be fairly true if you're using a dowling jig, need to be at four and five eighths inches uh, from the tip to back here is about how far we wanna drill down. Uh, now normally you'd wanna go down three and three fourths inches, but with the jig on top, that's gonna add a little bit of space, of course. So there you go. Anyway, uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put some blue tape on there, flag it out, and then we'll be ready to drill. So you'll be seeing that next. Okay, so we went ahead and got our board all uh, drilled out, as you saw here in the previous scene. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our board with the whole side 
we're going to put that up next to our uh, stop block. And what we've got going on here is we have our blade already set to 3 8 inches. We're face down, so presentation side down. And then we have our stop block over here uh, set up for 3 inches from this side of the blade. So that's where we get a perfect 3 inch cut uh, right down that area. But of course we want to make sure that we're at 3 8 and this is assuming you have a 3 4 inch board. So this way we don't cut all the way through the board, we just want to cut far enough that we can get our slicer uh, into this groove. So that's all we're doing on this part, so pretty simple. Let's get to it. All right, so we got our uh, cut done. So let's take a look and see what we got. Beautiful. Nice, perfect channel all the way through. And as you can see, our hole stops right there, which is fine. So that means we probably went a little deep, but you know what? That's going to be fine. No one's ever going to notice that. So not a big deal. And as you can see, we got a nice, good cut through there. So all we need to do now is uh, put on the hardware uh, for the quick version. But of course, we'll do a little dry testing just to make sure that it works right. But other than that, uh, this is pretty much ready to be uh, dipped in some mineral oil or whatever the finish of your choice is for uh, cutting boards pretty much. And uh, then there you go. We decided to do a little bit of laser work on the piece so that way we could fill it in with some powder paint. So that's what we're doing right here. And this is a little bit of that powder filling that we were talking about. And then here's some of the heating up. And we're going to have another video that's actually going to go into this in more depth. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys a quick look at this. All we have left now is basically putting the feet on. So it's going to take our little proverbial awl here. And I like things to be right on the edge. So we're just going to do that. Do a little, just really poke that in there because it's walnut that we're going into so yeah all right there we go so now we just need to drill the holes out and then we'll be good to rock okay so we got our uh, depth figured out so we're just going to go ahead and just go for it So now we have those drilled out, so I'm just going to go ahead and add these in, and we are done. Okay, that's good. So. And if you're wondering, yes, we already pre-waxed this, so <laughs> that's why things are attracting to it. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and throw on the slicer. So this is pretty easy. Just unscrew this. Take that out. Take that out. Good to go. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and slide this in. And just look for our entry point here just down in our groove that we cut earlier with the with the drill all right there we go and then this is good too to know if you're ever having to reassemble one of these things too let me tell you all right so we'll just get it to right about there There we go. All calibrated, good to go. Uh, had a little bit of a right justification requirement there, but uh, that's looking pretty nice. Okay, so now it's working. There we go. All nice, calibrated, looking good. So 
little mistake that we had on this one here, and I don't think a lot of people would have this problem. The calipers that we had were not doing their job, would be the easiest way of putting it. So the slot was a little short, like 0 0.30 versus point, it's point zero three seven five is what it's supposed to be, and this was point zero three zero zero. So anyway, long story made short, had to recut the groove there, kind of did a little bit of a boo-boo right here, not even going to lie. Uh, but for the most part, unless you're like staring at it, you're probably never going to notice that that's there. And as we can see, this thing works really good. Look at that. <laughs> All right. This is the final product. So there you go. Hope you enjoy. Did this project go through smoothly? No. No, it did not. This is a major pain in the neck, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. <laughs> so let me distract you from wanting to do it and I'll let me tell you why you should. Um, this actually works out really, really well. Um, what we did wind up doing here, just for full disclosure, because not everything in the shop goes the way we intend it, uh, this was filled in with a little bit of uh, epoxy or, in essence, uh, CA glue in here. So that was how we were able to get this to be nice and flat. I probably could have spent some more time on it realistically, putting more paint in there and filling in those little grooves and gaps. That probably would have worked just fine. Um, had I not need to get this done right away, then that would have probably been the answer. Um, the other thing was is that uh, make sure your caliper has a full battery in it if you're using a digital caliper because uh, little things like this really honestly get messed up pretty quickly. Uh, Rockler's instructions on this were fantastic, by the way, as far as this part goes. So nothing wrong with those instructions. There was something wrong with this. Well, actually that over there, but I believed it. So I guess that's me. Overall, really fun project though. Anyway, long story made short. Uh, I definitely hope you make one of these. Uh, they're great for the Christmas time. We're probably gonna put up actually one more of these here uh, before the end of the holiday season. Uh, doing a different method of this, which is actually going to be kind of fun. So definitely stay tuned for that. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest content. In the meantime, stay safe in the shop. And if you're watching this during the holiday seasons, happy holidays to you and your family and Merry Christmas.